God in man made manifest. That's epiphany as we celebrate that child born in Bethlehem was not only a little human child, he's also true God, one with the Father. Let's pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for this celebration of the Epiphany. Help us to open our eyes, to understand, to see the light and the joy that is ours in your Son, Jesus Christ, who came to save Jew and Gentile alike. In his name we pray. Amen. My dear friends, fellow redeemed saints of the living God. Did you hear the one about what would have happened if the wise men had been wise women? You already heard it, huh? <laughs> well, they would have stopped and asked for directions a lot sooner. They would have gotten there in time to sweep out the barn, make a casserole, and help deliver the baby. And of course, they also would have brought much more practical gifts uh, for that family. But seriously, these wise men, magi they are also called, weren't bumbling idiots. They really were wise men. They were men whose footsteps you and I yet today would do well to follow. Because these were men who were confident in the way to heaven and yet humble in their approach to the one who made heaven possible for them. Who exactly were these wise men? Well, meet Balthazar of Baghdad. No, we don't really know the names of those wise men, even though tradition says that that was one of them, but it's only tradition. And we're also not really sure whether or not they came from present-day Iraq. But it's certainly possible. Because you see, about 600 years earlier, before Christ's birth, the Jews were exiled to that part of the world. And during their 70 years of exile in Iraq, there was at least one Israelite who rose to prominence to a position of power and influence. And that individual was a man by the name of Daniel, the man whom we know who spent a night in a lion's den. Well, for 60 years, Daniel held important Babylonian and Persian government positions, including chairman of the Magi, as Daniel chapter 2 reveals to us. Well, if that is the case, I can't imagine Daniel studying the stars with these wise men without telling them about the maker of the stars and the maker of heaven and earth. And I think Daniel also would have told them other things. He must have also told them about the promise God made to send a savior from that nation of Israel, from the Israelites. I mean, why else? would wise men 600 years later care about the birth of a baby born 500 miles away from them in Jerusalem, in, Israel, in, in Bethlehem, in Israel. What we want to do as we look at the different characters of this story of Epiphany is take some faith lessons home with us. First one that I think about when I, when I think of this is Daniel's boldness, uh, that 600 years before all of this took place, I believe it's a reminder for all of us to be bold witnesses and also not to underestimate the impact of our sharing of the gospel with our co-workers or with our friends and neighbors. Because you never know how many generations of people will be affected by what you say to one person. Because you just never know the power of God's Word as it is shared with others. But now how is it that these magi, these wise men, found out about the Messiah's birth? Well, we know the story. It was our Gospel lesson for this morning. A strange star appeared which the magi understood by God giving them that understanding that this was announcing to them and leading them to the place where this child would be born. And so they just followed the star all the way 
to Jesus' house in Bethlehem. The first on-star navigational system we ever heard about. Right? Well, not quite, because if it were the OnStar that we know today, they would have gone right to the house, but they didn't. They went to Jerusalem to get directions as to where the child would be born. It seems that after announcing Jesus' birth, that star disappeared for a while uh, and uh, as to where the king of the Jews would be born. And so these wise men went to Jerusalem thinking that, well, if there's a king for Israel, he certainly would be born in the capital city. And so that's where they headed. And I think we can kind of understand uh, their confusion when they get to Jerusalem and nobody knows anything about what's going on. Nobody knows anything about the birth of a king. And ironically, when they were in Jerusalem, it was the eventual enemies of Jesus, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, who pointed the, the wise men in the right direction, that is, to Bethlehem, just eight miles from Jerusalem. But how did they know where to send these wise men? They knew the Bible. The teachers of the law knew what had been written by the prophet Micah. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Another faith lesson. Are you looking for direction in your life? Maybe decisions that have to be made as to what you're going to do with your life. I think what we can learn from this story is that uh, don't wait for some miraculous sign from God, a message written to you in the stars. It's true, the stars tell us and proclaim that there is a God. They proclaim to us that that God is a wise and powerful God. But beyond that, the stars can't tell us very much about who that God is. The stars, you see, can't tell us that we are sinners and that we need a savior from sin. The stars cannot tell us how Jesus died and rose again in payment for the sins of the whole world. And the stars can't tell us that through faith in Jesus as our savior, that he is the way to heaven for us. Only the Bible, only God's word <coughs> reveals that to us. Looking for directions in your life without reading the Bible and letting God speak to you is kind of like trying to locate a friend's home or house without knowing their address. You may drive around in circles uh, as these wise men did in Jerusalem until, for them, the scripture pointed the way. And I think the lesson, hopefully, is obvious for all of us. We are to follow the wise men's footsteps by eagerly listening to God's word. Listening to what God has to say to us in his word. And it's certainly true that God doesn't tell us everything that we might want to know. But God tell, does tell us everything that we need to know. He does tell us that through faith in Jesus, the door to heaven and all that heaven means for us is open to us. And it's that message on the plain white pages of sacred scripture and not some sort of spectacular sign in the sky that makes us sure of God's love and sure that his promises are real and they're all there for us. Well, since scripture said that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, to Bethlehem, the wise men went. This time there was no aimless wandering. That star reappeared and the, 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 the wise men were led directly to the house where the baby Jesus was with his mother and father. And the Magi were overjoyed to see the star and to get to the house. But again, as I think about them coming into Bethlehem, I wonder, do you think maybe there was a little bit of hesitation on their part of going into that house? I mean, these stargazers had traveled 500 miles 
to see the star maker to find themselves in the presence of the savior of the world that had to make them pause could it be uh, that the king of kings would really take up residence in a lowly house and not a palace or a mansion and yet when we read the account none of that seemed to matter to the wise man they treated that house like it was the grandest of palaces they didn't snicker at the old couch that was in there maybe or that old faded outdated wallpaper on the walls all they cared was that Jesus was there and Jesus is the one they wanted to see I mean for all they cared he could have been born in a barn what about these wise men when they entered overwhelmed weren't they with awe at being given the privilege of seeing their long-awaited Savior these wise men were so awed these were men who were accustomed to receiving honor but when they went into the home what did they do they fell down on their knees they bowed down and worshiped him approaching the Christ child in total humility realizing that they were nothing in the presence of the Lord you know I'm kind of relieved that the, the wise men didn't find Jesus in some palace because what it means for me is that wherever I meet Jesus wherever I find Jesus in his word and in the sacraments here in church it is a place that is truly glorious now think about that as a faith lesson for you when you sit down at your kitchen table and open your Bible and read it or you read your devotions at your bedside before you go to bed what a glorious place that is because you are there in the presence of Jesus himself as he speaks to you through his word and this place beautiful altar incredibly beautiful sanctuary we can come here but it's a place that needs updating it needs repairs as all buildings do it's got pastors that aren't perfect but the Word of God and the sacraments are here and it truly is a glorious place and so when we enter this place we too like the wise men ought to enter it with true humbleness and humility and that means I'm not going to plop myself down in the pew and almost dare the organist to wake me up with the music. It means I'm not going to sit there with my arms folded, convinced and sure that the pastor is not going to be able to tell me anything that I've never heard before. No, what God is saying, get down on your knees. We're in holy ground. We're in the presence of God. We're here in joy and thanksgiving to worship the one who came from heaven to save us from hell that makes this a pretty special place and a wonderful opportunity for us each and every time we dig into the Word of God and this worshiping of God doesn't simply mean that we bow down before the Lord does it magi the wise men certainly didn't think so they had gifts that they wanted to bring to the Christ child gifts fit for a king because that's exactly who he was and so again a faith lesson as we bring our gifts to the Lord let's remember who he is who it is that we are bringing our gifts and our offerings to he is the king he's not the American Cancer Society that's happy to take our money He's not the orphan grain train or some other organizations that's happy to take all of our cast offs. He is the one who is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And when we do it in this humility that God calls us to, when we bring, even if we bring our very best, everything that we have and everything that we are and bring it to the Lord, what do we realize? It's not enough. We can't bring enough to find favor in the sight of God because we are sinners but we bring them in thankfulness to God in true humility that the one to whom we bring our offerings is the one that receives them with joy and, and praise because they are given in faith trusting in Jesus 
we bring them with all humility. That's what God asks us to do. We bring them generously, humbly, and thankfully to God. Now, when the Magi, the wise men, were ready to leave, they were told in a dream to head home by a different route. A route that wouldn't take them back to Herod, because Herod had some bad plans in mind. In their continuing humility, these wise men obeyed. Now, Faith lesson again. When you return to your homes today, take a different route. I'm not talking about a different street, a different highway, a different road. This is what I mean. If you came here this morning angry with a neighbor, maybe his snowblower threw all of his snow on your driveway, I don't know what it is. But if you came here angry with your neighbor or someone else, Go home by a different route. Go home with forgiveness in your heart because you've received forgiveness from your Lord. And go home with a desire for reconciliation with that neighbor. If you arrived here this morning with bitterness in your heart due to maybe sibling rivalry, some problems in your family, go home a different route. Go home in peace. And go home with peace in your heart that says, I know that God loves me and I want to love my family. If you showed up here this morning jealous because a friend received more Christmas presents than you did, then it's time to go home a different route. To go home from this place content. Content that Jesus loves you. And that knowing that Jesus promises to provide all that you need for this body and for this life. My dear friends, we can know we will go home a different route because we have seen the King. Because we have heard of His love. We, here today again, in confession and absolution, have received His forgiveness and basked in that forgiveness. We have received His power, the power of the Holy Spirit working through the Word in our hearts and in our lives. Good thing to be here today. The, the mode of transportation has changed. At least I didn't see any camels parked out in the driveway, parking lot. Navigational systems may be different. But you know what? God still wants men and women and children everywhere to seek the Christ child like the wise men did, confident in your way to heaven through that child, and yet also in all humility, knowing who he is and what he has done for you. May God grant to us a faith like that, a confident faith that trusts Jesus, and a faith that humbly acknowledges the awesomeness of our God. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may it keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto eternal life. Amen.